in holy baptism, Mark, Mark was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has come to glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hand. Yes, put all things under his feet. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. 
You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory, power, and forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried, to be descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, to be ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from him he will come to the judge of the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is Amazing Grace. <laughs>
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. I preached many funeral sermons, but you know, it seems like it, it should get easier something as time goes on, but, but it doesn't. It's a very daunting task, and it was very helpful for me to, to think about Mark. Because Mark, um, I, he would often be one of the last people I would talk to before coming in for the worship service on Sunday morning. He'd be back there, and he and I would exchange some, some banter and some, uh, some jokes. And he always had a smile, and he was always encouraging, and he always helped put me at ease. And we kind of had a running thing where when the bell would ring, Either he or I would say, well, I guess it's time to go to work. <laughs> but you know, even though he faced and he continued to face so many challenges, Mark had that positive disposition. He was someone who was easygoing, someone who was encouraging to me, to you, to so many people. He was someone who <clears throat> was thankful, thankful to God. Now, that's really, I think, the theme that we have today when I started putting this all together and thinking about Mark and thinking about what we're here for. Some of you are aware, may not be aware, that that first hymn we sung, Holy, 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 was Mark's favorite hymn. And, you know, that's a hymn that we are all so familiar with, but I don't know if we have, like, if you're like me, you may not have taken the time to really appreciate and think about that hymn. It is an amazing hymn. Absolutely beautiful in, in the music and also in, in the words. Holy, holy, holy. A hymn of praise to the Holy Trinity. And of course, this hymn is based on our first reading from Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah gets this vision of the throne room of God and the angels singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. <coughs> in all things, it got me to thinking, in all things, our purpose is to praise God. That's the chief end of man, you might say. What we were created for, what we were redeemed for. A lot of times we, we, um, we emphasize one, uh, we emphasize the fact that Jesus has saved us from sin, from death, uh, from hell, from the power of the devil. And absolutely, we need to emphasize that. But we sometimes don't emphasize that Jesus has saved us for praise of Him. To praise Him, to worship Him, to give Him thanks in all circumstances. Sometimes we think to ourselves, maybe, I don't know, but... Some people think, you know what, I love to sin and Jesus loves to forgive sin. So that's a good match, right? And indeed, Jesus, he loves sinners. He doesn't love the sin, but he loves sinners. And in love, he came and he died for Mark and for you and me and all the world and paid for our sin on the cross. We are saved purely by his grace alone, his work alone. Not by any of our works, but we receive this forgiveness, life, and salvation by faith alone, apart from any and all works. But again, that ultimate goal, what he saved us for, is to glorify him, to praise him. I don't know if this is a good analogy, but, you know, if you had a tractor that needed a lot of work, you needed to do a lot of overhaul on it and so on, and you put in a lot of time and money and you, and you fixed it, you saved it, so to speak. 
But then you never used it after that. Would would that be would the would it be complete? Would would that really make sense? But then I got to thinking maybe that isn't the best analogy because sometimes that does happen. You you fix a tractor up and then you um, you just like to look at it, but you probably take it out for a drive every now and then on a tractor ride or something. But its purpose, right? Its purpose isn't to just sit there. Its purpose, its ultimate purpose, wasn't to just be fixed. But, in, but to be used and to do what tractors are made to do. I was so glad then when I, when I talked with the family where they really emphasized to me how important it is that, that we emphasize that this is a worship service where we are here to worship Jesus Christ. You know, this is, um, this is not primarily or specifically about Mark. This is primarily and specifically about Jesus Christ and what he has done for Mark and what he has done for all of you and for all the world. And at the committal service, we're going to sing the doxology at, at the very end. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. What a fitting way to, to end that committal service in praise of God, our Savior. Now, I got to thinking also, why was it that Mark had a fairly easygoing disposition and why was he encouraging to so many people well, of course, he had a deep, strong faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But then I got to thinking about what's included in that faith is something that Paul talks about in our second reading from Philippians, a text that was uh, very important to Mark and to his family, about not being anxious about anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Paul goes on to talk about being content, that he is content in all circumstances. We often pass over, I think, I know I do, the thanksgiving part. Oftentimes I bring my requests to God, and I don't always give him thanksgiving and praise. But that is so incredibly key to having that faith in Christ, is to, to be thankful. Now, of course, our thanksgiving is based on something concrete and real. You may have heard people say, like, well, you just need to be thankful. Especially around thank, you know, Thanksgiving time, it's like, well, just remember to be thankful. And it's the question that I always have is, well, well, be thankful for what? It's also kind of like when people say, you just have to believe. You just have to have faith. <coughs> and it's like, well, but faith in what? You have to have faith in something real, something concrete, something that actually makes a difference. And that's where we get to the roots of our thanksgiving, the roots and foundation of our thanksgiving and praise and glory of uh, glorifying God and worshiping Him. And that is the gospel. Our Lord told His disciples on the night He was betrayed when they were so incredibly troubled by what was going on and they didn't know what was going to happen. He tells them, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he tells them, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. 
sometimes I think we we take that as like, well, we're each going to have our own little house or our own little tent or something like that. But his point is that there is plenty of room in the Father's house and that God has made all of us through Christ, through faith in him, through our baptism into Christ, members of the household of God. And most especially comforting in the point of the gospel here is that we get to be with Jesus. How incredible is it that the moment Mark breathed his last breath, he saw Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus is with us right here, right now, but we can't see him with our eyes. In Jesus, in the communion of saints, Mark is with us as well, but we can't see him. But Mark is now looking at the face of Jesus Christ in his immediate presence of Jesus. He sees him face to face, and unlike Isaiah, there's no fear. There's no woe is me. There's no worry. But only complete contentment and peace and joy. Pure satisfaction. And what's more, he now sees Mary. <coughs> He's with her, and he's with his brothers, he's with all of his loved ones who have died in the faith, all together again with Jesus, our Savior. And this is because Jesus, what he says next, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus made the way. Even though Mark and you and I deserve, really, because of our sins, to perish, God was not willing to let that happen, but he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you, for Mark, for me, for all of us, paying our sin in full, rising again from the dead, breaking the chains of death so that we no longer have to fear it at all, but we have that sure and certain hope of everlasting life. It is certain. You might be wondering, some of you, I hope not, but some of you might be, will I get to heaven? Will I be able to be in heaven? Or what's going to happen? Well, I can tell you today, and it's not me telling you, but it is the Lord himself telling you, yes, you can be certain that you will go to heaven. There is a place for you in the Father's house. And it's because it doesn't depend on you. It depends on Jesus Christ, who has paid for all your sin and reconciled you to the Father. Jesus says simply, believe in me. Believe in me. Trust in me. Finally, we thank and praise God that one day when Jesus returns, we have a sure and certain promise that he will raise the dead, the resurrection of the body. Now, this is something that we can hardly imagine or picture, but this is what God's word tells us. And how amazing is it that he will reunite Mark's body and soul together again and and all together again so that all believers in Christ will live body and soul in, in perfect bodies, completely free from all pain and free from all sin and free, free from all imperfections and so on, on the new earth, and it will be forever and ever. It'll be like, maybe picture the most perfect day you've ever had, and it'll be like that times infinity. And by the way, if everything's perfect, the weather should be really perfect too, which should make farming perfect and an absolute delight. And it got me thinking too, maybe all the tractors will be the right color too. I'm not going to say, but you know. Beloved of God, take comfort. 
in that glorious gospel. That is the anchor of your faith, our faith, and also the anchor for Mark and, and for you and for all the saints of our joy, our praise of God, our thanksgiving to God. It is why we thank and praise him today for all that he has done. All glory, praise, and honor be to our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord.
may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. give to the family of Mark and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. receive our thanks for Mark and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to life. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And, every, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now I bless your servant, O oh, peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people is Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, God be with you till we meet again. You have to insert in your book.
and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Amen. So, for those who are not attending the committal service, you're invited to go right away uh, downstairs into the basement and start enjoying uh, a meal there. Um, and so because of that, we will sing our table prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. Uh, be present at our table, Lord.